All right, let's do some Animal Crossing. If you're watching this later on YouTube, thanks for clicking. Hope you've been enjoying. I see there's a blue flower. <laughs> Good. Excellent. It's uh one less to worry about. Uh, yeah, it's miserable outside right now. It's raining a lot, so I'm indoors for the day. And I figured, ah, oh, let's just chill with a bit of this. Slightly different time, but, you know. It's a new season as well. Oh yeah, I gotta remember to do that later. Right, Toy Day. Okay, that's getting there. Oh, another black one. Nice. <laughs> okay, I've had some luck with the hybrids overnight. Well, over the past two nights, because I haven't played this. Red, unfortunately. This last color. Okay, we've had more luck here. We got summer shells now. Ooh. It's a good way to add color here. I already have that. All 
I might save that one. This is good news. I got the fossils from yesterday, so I need to find one more. I quickly logged in just to grab the daily stuff. Because I wasn't going to play yesterday, so we could grab it. Good guess. Hey, cheek foam crown. Okay. Still no luck. Okay, at least there's some hybrid progression. Okay, I'm gonna place this here. Hopefully that'll lead to more. I think we're on the, the verge of, like, getting there. Give me something I don't have. Oh, wow. Okay, I got it. I got something. Okay. 
finally got the Stegosaurus to go. You can't talk about Stegosaurus without talking about the distinctive diamond-shaped plates on its back. These plates, while made out of bone, were not actually connected to the animal skeleton. They simply grew out from the skin, remarkably enough, and were up to two feet tall and similarly wide. It's not clear exactly how the plates were arranged or what they were for, yet more mysteries of the ancients. We got a firefly from yesterday, last night. Tell me. The firefly isn't a fly at all. It is a beetle, you see, and one known for its ghastly glowing backside. In this light, it's this light is called bioluminescence and is caused by by a chemical reaction in in the rump. Males flash about in the night sky to attract females, while their larvae turn on the glow to put off predators. Speaking of their yucky young, firefly larvae love to dine on snails. Huh, <laughs> ew. To be fair, so are the humans. Let me intend some here. I don't know why it, it highlights pigeon milk and blue. even be. So they got the tree up and everything. some of these. Especially if I'm gonna do a venue in the house. Yeah. 
Coffee hasn't kicked in. It's fine. Don't mind me. That's not a whole lot for seven fossils. They must have been bad ones. Actually kind of funny. How it is here is how it's like outside, except I guess a bit more darker and just actually raining. Let me put away the stuff and then I'll grab what I've stockpiled. Change the music as well. Hello. <laughs> I mean, do I want a, a t-shirt that says hi? I don't know. stock up on this stuff just for the summer recipes. Probably got to start on designing the inside of this, but I don't know. Oh, I didn't buy any items overnight. Whoops. Oh well. And interest, because I completely forgot. It's okay. But I had all my money deposited, so I guess I earned something. Oops. I should probably start deleting some of these. It's getting close to being full. Um, 
imagine this is how you had to delete emails. You have to open them, press delete, confirm, go to the next one. You can't mass select, just everything is one by one. I already hate email as it is, so just avoid it where possible. Just work-wise, it just... It eats up so much time of your day. Sometimes people will email you, and they've already been having a conversation, and they just add you to the thread, and then you have to read the entire thread to get up to date as to what it is. As opposed to someone telling you, hey, so-and-so wants this. This is what I've talked about. It's like... The verbal conversation is less time than having to decipher what the email thread does. I don't know. Just... There's, there's been studies done that show that email eats up way too much time. But it's just one of those things that's just so ingrained that it's hard to not use it. There's a hundred slots, so... <laughs> right, do you agree with me with the email thing, Viking Goddess? I hate email. I try to encourage people to just... Either send me... A work message, or like... Just do an impromptu little meeting. Just like, hey... Let's talk for five minutes. Those five minutes prevent me from having to, like, spend 20 minutes reading an email. I think one day it'll go. My personal email at this point is just spam, honestly. Grape Umbrella? Yeah, how's it going? How's things? Apron? <laughs> okay. I bought a garden lantern. I'm gonna go place it where I wanted it. I might see what colors are available. It's definitely gonna go here. It's just... I'll see what colors I can get for it. Oh yeah, and I got a bunch of street lamps. Well, these I can just place because I'm not gonna change their color. At least, it matches. Just disappointing you can't customize. It'd be nice if you could customize the town center. Just the lamp types, maybe even the building colors would be cool. It's okay. At least this works now. I think that's all I wanted to do. Because the rest of the town will use the other type. Oh yeah, and I wanted a different color shovel here.
I'm going to be very picky. <laughs> I'm going to make it like it's a package deal. This one doesn't have one, but it's fine. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna do... Light change of plan. I think the yeah the flowers have changed. I just noticed that the bushes. I guess because it's now officially summer. Which yay! <laughs> ah, they're saying it's gonna be a really hot summer in Australia this year. I really hope not. It's kind of having the same signs as it was in 2019, end of 2019, slash 2020. Well, you know, um, how much, it was like, I don't want to say a third of the country, because it makes it sound bad. A third of the country sounds like a lot, but it wasn't, in terms of populated areas. But it was, uh, collectively the fires were like the size of Belgium. So, if that happened that year. It's okay, like, most of Australia's... ...kind of empty. People live along the coast, primarily, so... I mean, there were areas that were affected, but... For a whole, it was pretty much just remote areas, rural areas. I mean, the fires got so bad that just in Melbourne and Sydney in particular, we had the world's worst air quality for a day. Like, you could not see the sun. That's how bad it was in terms of just smog. Oh, I remember that. Just walking to work and thinking, man, this sucks. And then what was just around the corner... It was like, I got messages from people just saying, hey, you're right, I hear Australia's on fire. And that was just the news cycle for a couple of months. And then the big elephant in the room happened in 2020, and then no one talked about the fires anymore. It's scary if you live in an area that's affected, but here you get taught in school just what to do. And also the government has like a lot of just TV commercials and programs and just, you know, encouraging people to have a fire plan. Um, so, 
People are pretty well educated on the mana here, because you kind of have to be. I get made fun of for never, ever really slipping on ice. Because I've just never really been on ice. But, I've seen fire. Australia's equivalent of slipping on ice is just... You touch a metallic object and not realizing that it's summer and things heat up and you just kind of burn your hand on it. The seatbelt's the worst. Just... You get into a car with, like, extra caution. Burning your hand on a seatbelt. Oh, this is a new one. Okay. I'm convinced if I go anywhere that's really cold, I'm just gonna either complain the whole time, or... I'm actually gonna die by slipping on ice. I would like to do it one day, though. Move more north. Define more north. How north are we talking about? As far as you can go, what, like hitting the Arctic? hate the heat. Okay, but how hot are you talking about here? This is where I love the... the acclimation, just... Some people, when they talk about hot, I'm like, oh yeah, no, you're right, that is hot. And then others, it's just... Because they already live in a climate that's old. They say something like, oh, I hate it when it gets above 25 degrees Celsius. Or at around 25 degrees Celsius. It's like, I want my temperature to be 20 degrees Celsius. That's summer for me. You're in California, it gets to 110 plus. Alright, let's convert that. 100. Oh, wait, no, it's Cali, yeah. That's right. I know Cali's temperatures. Yeah, well, that is that is a warm summer. In Australia, it gets to like 147, if I'm not wrong. Hang on. At worst. 45 Celsius to Fahrenheit. No. Hang on, I'm wrong. 113, it's correct. All right, so it's not far off what we get. Record temperature is like... I, I hate converting. Uh, 47. 116.6 is like extreme worst case scenario. Average summer is 95, so it's like pretty similar. But it's a, it's a dry heat here at least. That's, that's more bearable. And there's air conditioning everywhere.
The reason I know... I didn't notice, know this until... I don't know when I learnt this, but... Um, for some reason, California got, like, some of the trees from Australia. And so, if you're not familiar with the, the Australian trees, they produce this oil, which is great. Um, using a lot of natural products. However, the downside to that, that oil is that it's highly flammable. So, it causes a lot of the fires here in Australia. And... So, California has, uh, the same problem with fires in certain areas because of those trees. And Australia and America kind of trade firefighters every year because we're opposite ends of the earth. So it's like, hey, when it's winter, we have nothing to do. So we help out Americans. And then in summer, you guys help us out with our fires. So they train each other up. Just kind of neat. Had bad fires last year, I heard. I got relatives in Cali. Um, I guess let's see. They're all fake. <laughs> it's okay. I had to try. Drone beetle. Displace animals and you get bears now, but you're in the hill, so... Oh, okay. Displace animals, yeah. That's so sad. We had a lot of that, um... With the big fires we had in 2020. I must say the drone beetle is like that boorish acquaintance who is much too loud for quite a polite company. That is, it is a large bug with a square head and is so named for the droning noise it makes when it flies. Furthermore, it has hooks on its feet that can help it cling tightly to trees. Hook feet. <laughs> yeah, Australia's kind of gnarly. Do I see a lot of cockatoos? Uh, where I used to live, yeah. So I used to live at the edge of suburbia, and so that was... If I took a drive for like 20 minutes, I could get to an area where there were kangaroos and koalas and cockatoos. Um, kookaburras, like, yeah. Not anymore, like I, I live in the city now, so it's a lot further away. you have birds. Oh, nice. Have, have you uh, seen... See, cockatoos are the more well-known ones. But I, I like kookaburras more just in terms of look. They just look so fuzzy. And they're tiny. The one downside about them is like... You know, most birds, they sing you a song and they wake you up. It's just, ah, oh, they're singing. That's so pleasant. Kookaburras are like, ha 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 ha! They're laughing. It's just... Guys, shut up. It's it's like 9 in the morning. Give me like 15 more minutes and I'll, I'll be good. Now we have a, lo a lot of nice birds here. I thankfully didn't live too close to them, but... I did visit a few areas where that, they were just everywhere. Oh, 
Yeah, our birds have become very gnarly. So let's see, we have a bird that has learnt to pick up twigs, light the twigs on fire from an already lit fire, and then go... They're both terrible choices. And then drop the twig on grass, so then the grass lights on fire, and then it flushes out all, like, the little animals. So then they can hunt. So we have birds that start fires. We have pelicans that have been known to try and eat small dogs. That's like very, very north though. And thankfully not here, but in Sydney there's the ibis, which is just that. They're known as bin chickens. Because they've learnt to open trash cans now. And so in certain parts of Sydney, they just... On the day where the trash gets collected, there's just all these birds opening up the trash cans and just making a mess. Oh, and the magpie. Stupid bird that, like, just swoops and just pecks you if you get anywhere near its tree. I think that covers it. There's other ones, but... Primarily those. The funny ones. I think the one that learnt how to just smoke out smaller animals, that's kind of crazy. It's using tools to hunt. Oh, it's health, okay. I guess if I want to move stuff, it's probably a good day to do it. I don't think I want to move stuff. Okay. Um, I don't, uh, I guess there's not much choice. I can see how this looks. I'll just customize this one, and if I don't like it, I can just use the other one I have. Is there anything else I want to use? Mm, not really. Wait, I might put- I might replace... I think I'll try and get like a model of that next. to go buy groceries today, but just... When it's just miserable and raining, and the other thing is because it's getting closer to Christmas, it's just annoying having to go near a shopping center. Especially just... I don't know, people suck. <laughs> when it's... When it's raining, I feel like it's just people are worse drivers, but couple that with just... Christmas shopping, ugh. Hopefully it'll die down later. I mean, it's still not even 12 here, so... This time. Aren't I in summertime? Yeah, I am, but um, this week... It's been really, really wet. Just raining all week for some reason. It can happen. Spring is like a mix of rain and warm. And then once you get to mid-December, it sort of stays warm. 
Nah, eh, I mean, I think that's fine. <laughs> this looks pretty good. I said Christmas time. Yeah. Christmas time is some. This does a disconnect with that. As just everyone associates Christmas with cold, but for me, Christmas is like summer. It's warm. You wear shorts. You go to the beach. Completely different experience. It's usually like a cookout. Christmas. I mean, imagine Christmas swimwear. Like, just think about that for a sec. A weird idea, but it exists. I would like to experience the cold wind, the cold Christmas one day. Just what was advertised to me on TV and movies. That was a good guess. Add snow on the ground, it's beautiful. I mean... I... <laughs> I want to say I've seen snow, but maybe I haven't. We have snow here. But it, it happens on... A couple of mountains. And it's for like, less than a month. It's usually July, end of July, early August. Or is it Ju end of June, early June? It doesn't matter, it's like a month. And it's not a whole lot of it, but that's the snow we get. So I've been to those mountains a couple times. And I think the deepest snow I've been in, um, it's like just below knee deep. I mean, I'm, I'm tall, I'm like six foot, so make up, make of that what you will. Or 180. Two or 84 centimeters? I'll, I'll say both units. I think I got my conversion right. Ugh, good. I think I'm, I'm near the end of this now. Had two feet outside the door. Yeah, that's crazy. People have sent me their, their pictures of, like, what their house looks like, or just what outside looks like, and it just looks like they're on a whole other planet. I really wish that it would indicate this better. I have Discord. I do, yeah. It's a pretty small one, but I do you have one?
Sometimes we watch stuff on there from time to time. I've been watching... Um... Hell's Kitchen and Kitchen Nightmares because there's new episodes of that. And I don't know, I just... I'm not one for reality TV shows, but there's something satisfying about seeing Gordon Ramsay just yell at someone who's just completely delusional or just is horrible to their employees. Just someone who's a train wreck getting yelled at. It's just, I don't know, cathartic. I think there's a bot. Assuming the bot is working. Let's see. Okay, it does work. I don't know. I think I need to swap the bot out because it just doesn't announce follows anymore and sometimes it just doesn't work. But I've heard other streamers having problems with bots as well, so who knows. I know Twitch has been doing things in the background. Did I get these? No. Okay. We should probably watch more of that at some point. I think we're a couple of episodes behind now because of the move. The move has just... It's altered my sleep pattern slightly. Like... I guess in a good way, because uh, I, I feel like I'm getting up a lot earlier now. But it could also be that this place has a lot more natural light than the previous place. My bedroom doesn't feel like a cave anymore. I, I, yeah, I don't know the drone beetle. Okay, I'm gonna hang on to some of these butterflies because I want to make butterfly models. Maybe I'll do something with them. I think that's all the daily stuff done. I got the rock. Oh. Trees. Furniture from trees. I want the bistro table.
game, please. <laughs> How do I keep doing this? Somehow accidentally squeeze through perfectly. And then when I want to go back, I got stuck. Should probably take a look at the list of fish. For December. I swear if it's another football. <laughs> okay, it's a basketball. That's good. I've found... I don't know, six footballs? This is weirding me out how just in-game it looks like how it looks like outside. This is too, too close to reality. There we go. All right, it's shark season. <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> oh, I hate it when they do that. Okay, I've only plenty of chances. I did collect a bunch of bait, so if I do want to go on a massive fishing trip, I can. to look at this. I don't know. I'm hoping this layout looks nice ultimately. I think I left. Oh, but I can't climb it anyway. Wait, no, come on, there's a room. <laughs> what? No, come on, there's a room. Is it really gonna make me go with the Statue of Liberty? How wide is the statue? Okay, if it could fit, it would fit. Damn it. Do I want a beast or a table? I mean... I do want to get one. Because then I can... I've been used For restaurants, I've been using just regular tables. 
So which ones I'd re I'd be replacing? Maybe this one. I don't know. I can't remember. Do I want to wait? Or you can bring me one. Uh. thinking. <laughs> I mean, if you have a spare one, sure. But if it's not, a, if, if it's a hassle, then I can wait. I think it was more on, well, if I do get it, what will I do with that right for now? I think... I wanted to do something here, but it's just... I don't know. I almost feel tempted to scrap the idea. Sometimes the chase of things is more fun. Yeah. Could just be around the corner, we'll see. How big is a statue? Okay, that's why it's massive. I think I ha I got this. If I was if I was to get the tape, I'll ditch this and then I think placing it here makes sense. Doing something here, some form of arrangement. Maybe I should just put more farming stuff here. That would make sense. I do have a silo that I was gonna do something with, so maybe that's a good spot for it. I also love that I spent all this time watering the plants, and now it's raining. Now it's even more like how it's like. You love the brick path. It's a good one. I've used it quite a bit. I just wish they weren't so stingy with the number of pattern spots you get. Or slots, whatever they're called. We need twice as many. This is very stingy. I know I can... free up a couple more, but... No, wait, these, because I'm not using these anymore, so I got two slots. That's just how Nintendo does it, it's just... For some reason, they just don't don't do things and in, that interact with the internet well. Oh, I thought that was okay. Water flooring. Just water flooring. Oh, the, exactly what it, what it sounds like. I don't know what I was expecting. Um, that's what I was trying to do. I thought these would be more useful, but... They didn't end up being useful. 
So I got two spots. Now I can go do happy home stuff. Any beetle models? Nah. I think the rest can go. Okay. I can't believe it started raining. Well, it's okay, everything's watered now. I'm just going to put my money away and then we'll go. Oh, yeah, because I didn't do this yesterday. Oh, well. No, wait, two. I'm gonna try again with the turnips tomorrow. This week was stressful because the entire week they were below 70 bells until Thursday, where it went over 120 and then I just sold out. That's it. <laughs> Do I want that? I mean, I guess I want an interesting background. I got that already. Yours were 57 this morning. I haven't checked mine, actually. Should probably check them. Um. Okay. Fifty-two now. Oh no. Well, let me see how much mine are. I think I'll get more simple wall.
simple panel. That's what I meant. I want to see if I can get... I think I might be able to do this for the indoor part. If I can find a pattern that's just bottles, so then it looks like... I'll set up a bar. I think, I think I can make it work. You go to other islands to sell? Ah. I'm just lazy. But also typically like during the day I'm working, so... Well, mine are 154, so... I could have done a little better, but that's fine. And, yeah, it's past midday, so they're going to be like that for the rest. I've already sold mine, so it doesn't matter. But if you need to sell... <laughs> I can't find any anything better. I got 152. Oh, I didn't plant the gyro. You're good. Going to give some bells away. <laughs> yeah, I was like that on my original file, just to the point where I had too many. This time around I've played it a bit more slow. I didn't just do the whole turn up thing early. I had a friend where we were sending each other just expensive large things constantly, so... Almost practically every second day I was getting something like a castle wall or a car in the mail. Oh wait, I did the wrong thing. Oh man, it feels so weird being here during the day. Is this- wait, Leaf is here? I'm hoping you can help me with something. I'm sure I'm supposed to give a talk about flowers at a school. The only problem is I can't find it. I hope this isn't too much to ask, but could you go into the school? Really appreciate it, thank you. Okay. That's why he's here. I thought I could make Leaf a house. I hope that everyone's excited to learn about flowers, especially you, Will. Let's get started. Today I'd like to talk about flower hybridization. It's the most special thing. <laughs> the best part, it's easy. No, it's not! No, it's not. Stop. Stop telling me it's easy. I've been doing this for two months and it's still not done. Let's say I have a yellow flower and I plan to buy a red one. In no time at all, I have myself an orange flower. Simple as rain, isn't it? Now I'd like to ask you a question. If you plant a white tulip next to a red tulip, what color would you get? Let's see. Well... White! No. Pink. You got it. I'm so proud. By the way, you can also get red or white tulips that way too. Isn't that nice? Flowers are really amazing. There's so much joy in each and every one. Joy I hope you'll spread to others. Everyone here will now be able to decorate with hybrid flowers in any yard they want. Isn't that special? You could build a beautiful bed of happy flowers. That's actually kind of a nice arrangement. 
But, you know, realistically, if you were doing this outside of Happy Home, the time it would take to do this... <laughs> I have seen people do this on their island, and it's just, in just insane. If hybrid flowers are placed next to each other, you can grow even rarer flowers. It's a worthy challenge. Alright, that's it. That concludes our lesson on flowers. Uh, one more thing. You can use fruit trees or veggies you've grown in your decorating. Try them all. And now today's lesson is over. For real this time. It's easy. Yeah, okay. Sure. It's going to be 2024. And I still won't have these... These hybrids yet. The hardest to grow green. Yeah. I'm still trying. I messed it up. Because I didn't realize you needed hybrid purple. So I was just using normal purple. Didn't explain that at all. Didn't say, oh, by the way, there are some flowers that you get that'll say they're red, but they're not really red. They're hybrid red. How do you know? You don't. It's a mystery. Ooh. <laughs> it's like, Leaf is the kind of person that is excellent at what they do, but then when it comes to explaining it, it's like, that old thing where you get taught how to draw an owl. It's like, step one, draw a circle. Step two, draw the rest of the owl. What a dick. I'm happy that Stu got to appear here. It was originally on the island, but we had to make a room. Dude, the choices are... Is that a... Why are you called Goose? There are so many tiny islands here, it's the perfect supervillain lair. Too bad my muscles are hero caliber. <laughs> I haven't seen some of these villages. Oh, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Nothing... well, maybe this. You could place that outside. Um... Maybe? I already got that sign. Headphones, yes. Oh, wow, okay. Way to blow all your money. Okay. Wait. Good luck out there. Hang on. Let's talk about facilities. Oh, no. Okay, never mind. I thought I could do another one. So, let's see. 
that... okay. Another office. I mean, this is a work from home chicken. Who should I pick? It's between the chicken and the pig, honestly. Hotel? Piano playing? I'll pick the chicken. I want one of those vacation homes, but I want to use it as a secret lair. You, you just said you want to wake up and work. Excuse me, what did you say? B bouquet? I want you to bring everything you've got to this project. It's ambitious, but maybe you could pull off something like this. Wake up. That's it? Just as long as it has clocks? Oh, that's very nice. I really like your concept. It's clocks. You just want to be aware of the time. Okay, that's a good theme. I'm gonna put this chicken in the Arctic Circle. Just banish him to the longest... <laughs> banish him to the ends of the Earth. I mean, he says he wants a lair, right? That's like a lair island. Found an excellent location for you, blah 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 blah. So this is my new base. Yep. I went and got some some tea. Okay. Alright, uh So I guess outside I'll still put a time limit of ten minutes. So let's see. Ten minutes, and it'll start the moment I do this. Okay. Go. I'm throwing the house in a corner. <laughs> you can select plants on an area that's completely stone. Oh, I, I can't do... <laughs> I can't do anything with farthing. Um, hang on. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Oh, this is already off to a bad start. Okay, I, c I can make this work. Um... I'm gonna start with the lazy pathing. Does that even... That even makes sense. I might ditch it. You know what? Let's just do everything else first. Boy, this one might be harder than I thought. Alright. You know, the lair. You have some crates going on for your evil doing. This is evil, evil storage. Oh, 
Yeah, there we go. Okay. This one might be harder than I thought it would be. Bars. Oh, what have I done? Makes sense now. I really have not done much here. I mean, I'm just gonna make it so, you know... Dude can do things. I mean, you might be evil, but you need green stuff. so dumb. <laughs> this is like, almost like a Crash Bandicoot villain. Okay, sure. I mean, I don't think this is necessarily bad, I think it works. Oh, hang on, I got an idea. I don't want to eat up too much time, but... Okay, we'll start rough. I don't think that necessarily looks too bad. What is this? What is this theme? Try to do the best I can here. Alright. I got three minutes. This one's genuinely difficult.
I need the music. Out there. I'm not really sure what else to put out here. This might be a case of less equals more. It runs a lecture theater. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I don't know. This is this is kind of a mess. You have a bike. Put the bike in your evil storage. No, oh, time. <laughs> I mean, okay. I don't know. This one was hard just because you can't really do anything. There's no grass. You can't plant stuff. It's just you have to go for random junk. I guess it's kind of on theme. Okay, I did make it so you can't act a lot. I'm allowed to fix it. There we go. That's, that's fine. Or... Hang on, better yet. Which one was it? It was this one. Alright, that's the only adjustment I'll make. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this chicken lives in an interesting way. Okay, with the indoors, I'm giving myself 15 minutes. So the only two items you want- why do you need two clocks in your house? I'll make this work. Okay. 15 minutes. Start. Oh wait, no, no, not yet. Let me expand the room first. Because that's just... There we go. Okay. 15 minutes. Start. Now. Dude wants a lair, right? That looks pretty lair-like. Okay, so I'll do my... Stop. Oh crap, I pressed the wrong button. Just 
This is what happens when you play a PlayStation game and then go back to a Nintendo game. You're accidentally pressing... <laughs> B to confirm. One day they'll all agree on what button will be confirmed. Um... I think this was the tile I wanted, actually. My B. Alright. I'm going- going for the complicated thing. Oh, but there's not an another one. I think it'll work. Yeah, this will work. This is where I'm going to spend a lot of the time. Gonna be worth it. I can't just... Ugh, damn. I wish I could just clone that way. Okay, so now we have... the room divided. I'll just move these out of the way for now. Okay, wall. That looks evil there enough. Okay, hang on. Go back. Trying not to overthink it too much. Yeah, you know, smart chicken reads. Okay. Uh, lighting. I'll do lighting next. Just get the room details out of the way and then I'll start just laying furniture. Uh, nothing. I guess let's just go basic. Might be basic, but so what? Okay. So let's get all the junky ones. He wants this, he wants this. Okay, give him. I'm just gonna get a bunch of stuff out. Why did I put the. <laughs> the thing on, stop, on top of the stove? Do that. Um, get that. I guess we'll give him a place to sleep. Somewhere to keep prisoners. Assuming it works. 
Um, prisoner gets a toilet and that's it. And then the prisoner will, all, will also get a cot. I'm leaning into the villain thing. Alright, let's just work with this for now. So, the person who's trapped will not live in comfort. Don't ask how this gets open, just assume that there's a way to open it. That's it. Sure. <laughs> ha, you know what? This explains why he has two clocks. It's like one's for him and one's for the prisoner. Early stream today. Hey, Star. Yeah. It's miserable outside, I was gonna go do some shopping, but, um... Yeah, it's just because it's Christmas time and it's rainy and miserable, it's just... Decided against it for now. I might go later. It's supposed to be <laughs> summer. Leave it at that. Um, now, the only downside to this is I can't place another rug. Unless. Hang on, let's just. Yeah, how are you, how you doing today? That works. Do they give me simple wool? Yeah, I don't think they do. Oh no, they do, they do, they, they absolutely do. Doing okay, feeling drained from errands. Decided to play more Detroit later. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll probably watch for sure. Be interested to see your reaction on how some of the stuff goes down. Watch someone else do the stuff you did yesterday, and you're like, damn, wish you would have recruited the security guy. Yeah. And that's the thing, it's very hard to know who to trust. But you definitely got the right idea with the other guy, like that, yeah, the dungeon dude. Definitely was a, a red flag for sure. I mean, you know, this dude may be a villain, but he does live kind of nice. I'm not going to worry too much about the walls on this one. Isn't there a trash can? Oh, no, wait. There we go. Um, yeah, I'll just do that, it's fine. What's up with the prison? Well, the dude wanted a lair. That, his theme was, hey, I want a lair. So I figured, okay, this dude is a, just 
chicken villain, you know? Evil chicken. So that's where he keeps the hero hostage and tells of the evil plan. And the dude eventually escapes, you know? Okay, now I know why he has two clocks. Get a dresser as well. Does someone named Peter Griffin live down the street? That'd be funny. Oh, I like how it color matches the pillow. That's cool. That fight, the chicken fight was funny. I always liked that, but then at a certain point it's like, oh my god, guys, how could you escalate this any further? There's no TV? No, there it is. This is fine. I mean, damn, this house is pretty damn functional. <laughs> Where did you put it? Um, sure, we can have that. Okay, we need stuff over here. I have t two minutes, just under two minutes, okay. So, let's see. I'm gonna put another one of these down. And just as a form of intimidation, you know, he will have his workbench here. Like, oh, what could he be working on? Can't have too many whiteboards in the lair. Exactly, you need a place to brainstorm and write down your plans. I don't have much time left. Oh god. Crates, please, I just... Okay, these... That'll do. Okay, hurry, hurry, hurry. I have limited time. No, this is just a challenge that I'm setting myself. Just decorating as quick as I can. Just coming up with a theme, running with it, and just trying to get it done in a set amount of time. I can take as long as I want, but... I like to do this. I think it pushes the creativity a little bit. I mean, this room is really nice. I'm pretty happy with this. Actually functional. Hmm. 
You can spend as long as you want. I'm just putting kind of an artificial time here. I'm surprised. Even the lighting, like, it, it works fine. Except, I mean, okay, the prisoner gets a light. I should probably remove the last light so I'm stuck in the corner. I'll make that little adjustment. There we go. But what if he has to poop? Oh. Yes. Yeah, it's done. No oversight. My power fortress is complete. You really put everything into that. I'm so impressed. <laughs> he looks evil a little. Should have taken a photo though. He had a cup of coffee out while there was a cup of coffee on the table. That'll do. I should have put a poster on the wall next to the gym equipment, like his nemesis. Damn it. Yeah. That would have been funny. Oh well. The great thing is I didn't put anything for leg day, so the old thing about, you know, if you skip leg day you're a bit of a chicken. That's a, that was a lot for just one. Alright, there's nothing else I want to buy. Oh, it's you. I left regular Lionel back on the mainland. You're dealing with fancy Lionel now. Dude probably wants like a castle. What were those eyes? What are you reading? I just look completely bugged out. Okay, well let me collect the rest of the vines and then, then I can go. to talk to the teacher in the school. You like the shrubs by the school, they're called Plumeria. Yeah, give me one. The only thing I forgot to do in the school was put music, but I guess it's just like, well, it's a distraction. Very quiet study. I don't know why I put a, t a TV behind the teacher. Oh, he can't even sit in the... Okay, well. I'm sure somehow the teacher can get into their desk. It's okay.
Movie day for those Fridays when the teacher doesn't want to do anything. That's true. I forgot about movie day. Or like awkward sex education video day. Some of those videos are just very bad at explaining stuff. One of the ones I watched, the way they explained male puberty was just like, it was a kid singing and then he started hiccuping frantically. And then suddenly after, I think like about five minutes of just explaining something, I don't remember what. The kid started humming with a deep voice. So it's, it's just like, well, what? Am, am I gonna hiccup like a maniac until suddenly my voice breaks? Like, what's going on? You might start noticing girls. It's okay if you just notice them. Just weird, weirdly phrased, just beating around the bush. I mean, the reproduction stuff, it was, you know, it was what it was, right? It's just explaining the mechanics of it, but then when it came to just human sexuality, it just beat around the bush. It was, it was dumb. Kids at your school didn't pay attention to any of it anyway. You had 16 to 17 year olds program at your school. Yeah. Kind of the same here. I think that's that's always the case. It's I don't know if it's a mix of maybe the school not explaining it, but also it's just comes down to parenting to some degree. Like some parents actively avoid the topic or just put some weird idea in the kid's head like, you know. checking what I should work on now, but you know what? Since it's the new season, I should probably get sharks. That's the only video I remember, just because I remember being so confused at the hiccuping thing. It just... It was framed like as if I was going to get an illness that was going to make me hiccup a lot. You know? Like chicken pox. And then it disappears, like everyone gets it. Everyone gets it, and then it's fine. Once you got in it, you're done. Yeah, well. It turned out normal-ish, I, I think. The video didn't do any sort of damage. I put two and two together. Did I start hiccuping one day and be like, is this it? You know, I don't really get hiccups that often. And generally if I get them, I maybe three at most and then it's done. So I'm kind of lucky. I know people that once they start hiccuping, they cannot stop. Oh, there's my- yeah, look at all the bait that I got. We'll take some out. Uh, yeah, we'll do this. And hiccups hurt? They hurt? Uh, not mine. If they're the type that don't stop for a while, that would explain- oh my- oh! <laughs> you know, I've never made that connection. Because <laughs> I know- I know friends that when they hiccup, they say ow or I. And I just never thought anything of it and 
until you just said that. Now I'm like, oh shit, is, is that actually painful? I'm gonna have to ask this next time. How did I go this much through life without knowing that hiccups could be painful? I guess because my own ones are so mild, it's just... I've never really thought about it. I just thought when someone said it, I guess they were... It was just out of a surprise. Huh. No, don't chop it off. Place, place it. I want this to be decorative. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I guess I haven't experienced painful hiccups. There we go. That's a little better. Yeah, I'm a I'm a functional adult for sure. Probably customize my fishing rod so it doesn't break. I'm trying to think of the. Because the only other movies we watched were just stuff relating to things we studied. So it was like film adaptations of books that we were reading in class. Um. And then, I guess, we studied the movie Gattaca, so... Really don't remember other stuff we'd watched. Oh, I think we watched The Never Ending Story, actually, a couple times. Whoa. And what's eating Gilbert Grape? What the fuck is that? It's an eel. I'm curious to try eel. Because it's something that is in Japanese food. And it's just one of those things that I've heard about it enough. I'd eat it. I mean, I'd be willing to try it. If so if someone had it I'd, and was willing to offer me, offer me a piece, I'd try it. But, um... For me to order it on my own, I feel like it's a bit of a gamble. I'd feel bad if I didn't like it and then it's just a nice plate of food gone to waste. Particularly because the dishes sound good and sounds like they're nicely prepared. What about sea urchin? Uh, I'd try that. What's the weirdest thing I've eaten so far? The weirdest thing to some would be, um, kangaroo. But in Australia, it's not that weird. I've had crocodile, and then there's some dishes that are, uh, that invo involve offal. Which to some would be very weird. I'd say in terms of animal, crocodile probably the most exotic. Kangaroo is not exotic. So here's the thing. Here they encourage the eating of kangaroo because it's more sustainable than cattle. They can survive anywhere and they don't produce like as much methane. And there's a lot of them. There are a lot of them. Like, they outnumber us by a pretty l wide margin. There's a lot of kangaroos. 
But some- I forgot what show it was, but I was watching something. Some old cartoon. And they were talking about protecting the world's endangered animals. And for some reason, kangaroo was on that list. I'm like, what? They're not- they're not endangered. What do you- what do you mean? That's- They're so cute. Uh, the big ones, I wouldn't say cute. The big ones... I don't know. They're, they just, they lays about, they lie, they just lie down. They look so, they almost look like sloths. How they just lays up, they're just lazy. But that being said, they can get super aggressive and they just look like they're on steroids with the muscles they have. The cute ones are the wallabies. We don't eat those. Those are the sm those are the small ones. I guess the ones in the zoo don't get the opportunity to be buff. The wallabies are the small ones. So those ones are the cute ones. But kangaroos are probably the most metal as fuck animal. So, in times of danger, if there's a fire, the mothers will ditch their baby <laughs> to escape. It's like, you're slowing me down, and they, they drop them. So there's a lot of animal rescues that pick up baby kangaroos. And then... Alright, if you want to go down a very gnarly rabbit hole, just look at how pouches work functionally. Just the anatomy of the pouch and how it works. It's it's insane. Where are the sharks at? Yeah, I wouldn't mess with the, the buff ones. Um, but kangaroo is nice tasting, just going back to the topic of eating them. I always find it funny talking about it because it's like, to Americans it's the equivalent of them eating, you know, the bald eagle. It's just, the kangaroo is on our coat of arms, it's considered our national animal, but we eat it. It's pretty good. It's like, imagine any dish where you have a nice cut of beef. You just use kangaroo instead. The only thing about kangaroo is you can't cook it too much. So, you know, if you if you're a fan of well done meat, uh, kangaroo is probably not for you. Because well done kangaroo meat will effectively become like a puck. You're a medium well kind of person. Okay, medium well I think you can get away with. It's just... Well done is definitely not a thing. Medium is fine. Medium well, it probably wouldn't be as good of an experience, but I, it's still possible. But it's got a nice taste. You could probably do something like, uh, spiced kangaroo sausages and be fine. That you could do medium well. Because it's mixed in with other things and, yeah, it'll offset. 
it getting tough. My dad went to, um, like a trade school with an aboriginal dude, and, um, we got invited to go camping with them. So it's like, to some place where it's their land, effectively. And that's the first time I had kangaroo. They caught one, they butchered it, and, you know, they presented it to me and my brother, and don't tell us what it is. This old man waited until we were about halfway done through it, and then asked us if we knew what we were eating. So, you know, we didn't. We asked. And he tried to scare us. He was like, oh, you're eating Skippy. Which is effectively Australian Lassie, if you don't know. It's like Lassie, but a kangaroo. He expected us to freak out, but we just kept eating. There's a place here that has kangaroo sausages past that up to try duck. Maybe you need to give it a go next time. I can recommend it. The way that I like kangaroo, particularly, is in sausages or like strips, and you kind of use it like uh, instead of beef. Yeah. You use kangaroo and tacos. Just kangaroo strips. Pretty nice. You hate when people do that. That's how you ended up trying deer for the first time. Your dad asked you what you thought of the meat, later admitted it was deer. <laughs> well, the more common one I got, and this is just a lot of uh, kids that grew up in Latin families will understand this. It's just, you ask your parents what you're eating, and then they're like, it's come y callate, which it means shut up and eat. like a staple. There's, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that I ate. Or I didn't know what it was until way later. It was just like, just eat it. Never heard that before, really. I wonder if it's like a regional thing. Man, I have not had any luck with these sharks. I'd like to try deer one day. I think it would be interesting. Because in Australia we don't have, um, outside of zoos, right, like, animals with antlers. You'll never knowingly eat it again, but you have to admit it was good. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. We'll donate the, uh, whatever it was.
The one food that I can't eat because it makes me sick is eggplant. That's the only thing. Like, not only does it give an instant gag reflex, but if I actually do force myself to eat it, it, it makes me sick afterwards. Suckerfish. Alright, let's learn about the suckerfish. The suckerfish is a curious fish that attaches itself to a large, larger marine life using a suction cup on its head. The benefit to the suckerfish is that it gets to eat smaller parasites and the dead skin off the host's body. Amusingly, some people have used suckerfish on cords to attach to catch large turtles with the fish's own suction. Imagine this practice is the cause of some awkward conversations between fish and turtle. Yeah, well there you go. I thought nature can be a bit of a freak show. Alright, let's learn about the ribbon eel. The ribbon eel is related to the moray eel, though its bright colorization, coloration distinguishes it. It also has an unusual plant-like appendage at the tip of its nose that flutters as the creature moves. I like to think of it as having an extremely friendly nose that waves a greeting to those nearby. Are these actual facts? No, they're actual facts. Yeah. It teaches you things. Right? You can bring them something and learn about it, like... Let's say... What about the anchovy? There are more than 140 species of anchovy, but... They do all have some things in common. They are all small and feed by simply swimming with their mouths open to filter food particles from the sea. In my sleepier moments, I sometimes wish I could set do that. We got this item on display. Yeah, yeah. You are on board with the last one until the turtle suction part. That part sounded odd. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there's, there's things in nature that are just strange. I'm gonna see what the fish are for December. Hang on. Give me a sec, I'm just bringing up the fish list. December. Okay, I got the list, I think. Okay, so there's, there's quite a few in the river. There's tilapia in the river. There's all the sharks. Um, piranha in the river. I'm just looking at the list. There's quite a few in the evening. Dorado in the river. Ah, uh, Arapaima is like way later in the evening. Okay. All right, I'll go get more bait and I'll do some river fishing. Just get some of these out of the way so I can donate them to the museum.
I thought when I'd play this it'd be nice and sunny in game, so then it's like, oh, it may be miserable outside, but at least in game it's nice. Nope. It's actually mirroring what's outside. Take the 30. Fine. I need to find someone that enjoys eel. <laughs> you also hear in anime quite a bit, they have dishes with eel, and it just makes me curious. It's, that's how I was curious enough to try, like, the, uh, the omelette egg rice thing. Or it's just a massive omelette on top of a pile of rice and it's seasoned. That stuff is good. That's how I got to try Crocodile, was just... Had some friends in town and one of them ordered it. I would not have ordered it myself otherwise. It was all, all alright, not my thing. Just tasted like chewy fish. I don't know how else to describe it. But a good kind of fish, I guess. It was more of a, like, texture thing that I didn't like, as opposed to the taste. That's cool that I tried something new at least, yeah. I think an easy way to talk to people, particularly from other cultures and whatnot, is through food. So, I've tried to try different foods from different countries. So if I meet someone from those countries again, it's just, hey, I love this kind of food. Or ask for a recommendation, like something I should try. That was a turtle, it's a bug. <laughs> this is why I don't like fishing in rivers, just the bridge is getting in the way. But that being said, there's several foods where I'm just... I don't think I'll ever try them. Just cause it's just... I guess the idea is not appealing to me. It's like, I appreciate the sentiment of, you know, don't knock it before you try it and try it at least... everything once, but... There are certain things you don't need to try to know that you won't like them. Or at least, we'll have some form of difficulty. Uh-oh. I don't think I can catch it without scaring it. Like, one thing that I'm not gonna try that... ...is pretty common in Southeast Asia and Australia is... ...durian, that fruit. 
So it's a fruit that... It depends on you. It's one of those things where you flip a coin and... It's either going to be a delicious fruit or something that smells like rotting flesh. And I don't want to flip the coin on that one. Because it's just a genetic thing. Okay, I got tilapia. It's just, you'll either smell something horrible, and it's going to be one of the worst things you've ever smelled, or you're not going to smell it, and it's going to taste good. And I just don't want to... I think I'm good, you know? And then there's foods where it's like... They would Foods that kind of rose from a need... You know, it's, it's kind of, it came from an era where refrigeration probably wasn't a thing. And times were tough, it's just food was scarce. Understandable that these foods emerge, but... To want to have them in that manner these days, I don't know. It just doesn't sound appealing. So some of those is just like... For example, the Swedish have surströmming, which is like that fermented fish that's in a can... I've learnt about it. It's like, it's illegal to open cans of that stuff in public just because of how pungent that smell is. I think I'm good on that. It's just, I'm sure it had its time. And you know what? There's probably a way to have it where it, it tastes good, but it's just, it doesn't appeal to me. And what's that other one? It's like in the Philippines they have, um... Balut, which is just effectively eating a semi-formed chicken. It's like, you eat the embryo. But that, that, that doesn't appeal to me in the slightest. <laughs> you gotta force me to eat it. No, I'll, I'll have... I will have the banana curry pizza. I will not have so strumming. That's just, that doesn't appeal to me. No. Delicious fermented fish. Do you eat it, cat? Though. I mean, how off? How many times have you had it? You hear it's good, but you could never. Yeah, I could never. You've never had it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you're gonna make me eat it. And you've smelt it. Jeez, that's brave. Like a tin, or...? Oh, I need fencing here. Or just, like, a server. I think a server that would be more manageable, because at least it's in its intended final form. The only- the only thing we have is just- that's very... contentious is just Vegemite. It's just... But the only reason is because the way people try to have it, they try to have it like a peanut butter, and that's just a mistake. It's supposed to be something that you have in just the smallest amount, like, as thin a layer as possible. Dad opened it indoors one summer and it took days with open window for it to fully wear out. And you wanna- you want- you want to eat that. Like I said, I'm sure at some point in history it had its time. And it was probably a very, very useful way of like, keeping food good. Or at least, edible. Out of necessity. But, I mean, I don't know. You only know of it from I Love Lucy. Wait. Which one? Sustrumming or Vegemite or something else? Or Balut?
I mean, I love Lucy has had reruns, so it's just... Vegemite, okay. I didn't know that. I love Lucy aired at some point here. But there's plenty of shows that have aired that are well before our time. It's like, you know... It's like the, the classic Hanna-Barbera stuff. It's just... I've technically seen cartoons from the 60s and 70s, but it doesn't make me that old. Potatoes and what? What is that word? Nah, ke brood? I mean, the, the, uh, the rest of it sounds right. Uh, d spelling it again isn't going to help me pronounce it. Because I haven't learnt... The umlauts and whatever. It's, I don't know how they work. You know what? English to Swedish. How to, let's see. Flip it. Crisp bread. That's what it means. Knäckebröd. Oh, I'm not going to be able to say that. Knäckebröd. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. <laughs> There you go, tilapia. Let's learn about the tilapia. Wherever the waters are warm, tilapia can be found. It is a highly adaptable river fish. They mainly feed on algae, but they will also eat larvae and dead fish, or whatever fits in their mouths. I will confess that growing as an outlet, I similarly defended food as anything that fits in my beak. It's shark season. I've been trying to catch sharks. I haven't had any luck. I used, I think, 30 pieces of bait. So I decided to just do some river fishing, because there's stuff in the river to catch. There's also, let's see, other foods that I wouldn't try. There's also that coffee that, um... Is... It's effectively poop coffee. It's just... They got some animal to eat it, they digest it, and the enzymes partially digest the coffee bean, and so it's supposed to enhance the flavor. It's very expensive coffee, so not that I could get it anyway. But... I think it's cats. If I, if I remember correctly, it's like a type of cat. I think I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to food. Like, I try, I try things, but... There's just certain things where I just... I know that I probably won't enjoy it. Or it's just a case of, well, there's some part that's just gnarly. Okay. Like, I, I tried Vegemite and uh, just did not like it. But that being said, there was once where we went to a dinner and 
the place had a Vegemite steak sauce. And a friend of mine got the sauce and was like, you have to try this. This is unbelievable. It's like, it's actually good. And that was pretty good. I've heard that people have used Vegemite in cooking and not as a spread and it can actually add a lot of flavor because that extreme saltiness that's pretty useful in, in cooking. Or just the flavor it gives, so... I've heard, um... Like, particularly in the Vietnamese soup pho, people have put it in it and it actually tastes good. It adds some extra depth to it. It's just, I don't know. I haven't tried it myself, but... I've heard that there's there's other uses for it. There's a mac and cheese recipe for using Vegemite, and it's supposed to be good. You've had uh, ostrich and kangaroo meat in your stores for certain countries. They rotate through, but you never bought it because you wouldn't know how to cook it. And it's frozen, so it doesn't feel like the best chance to try it. I mean, frozen meat isn't too bad. But it's one of those things where the longer it's been frozen for, then yeah, it's just... It's gonna lower in quality. Wow, I'm just unlucky. The cooking it, it's just how you would cook beef, pretty much. That's just don't overdo it. If you're a fan of well done meat, don't. Anger is probably not for you. Medium to well done is probably the most you can get away with it. But it's usually recommended like medium or under. That's, you know, the, the cuts of meat. Sausages are a different story. You'd rather eat yourself raw than eat a well done steak. <laughs> Man, I have so much family members that just... They have everything well done. It sucks at barbecues because they have beef and steak. Just cuts of beef and steak, and I just never have it because they always have it just well done. It's just, I don't, I don't know. I don't like it. It's just chewy. I think when it's in strips and it's well done, that's fine. It's just, you can put, put it in like a taco or a sandwich or something and it's okay. Or a roll. But just as a large piece of meat, I don't- I don't get it. Just sneak to the grill and accidentally drop this medium steak on my plate. I feel like I should do that. The issue is the way it usually goes at these family events is like I'll... I'll hang out with my cousins, we talk, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh hey, it's food time. Like, I'd have to be paying attention. But I guess this year is going to be different because most of the old people are going to be away overseas, so... This year it's just going to be my brothers and cousins for Christmas, so there might be more of a chance... ...to not have a super well done steak. Yeah, that's just, I get it, to each their own. But I think with some of my family, it's just a fear of blood. Like meat just showing blood.
Okay, one more. Meanwhile, eating steak tartars on your bucket list. I'd like to try that at least once. At a restaurant. I think that's another one of those things that is off-putting to people. But I can understand it. It's like... You know, ceviche, for example, and sushi. That involves conceptually similar things. Just raw meat. Or raw meat that then gets cooked with, like, lime or something, like, just by a chemical reaction. I've had dry-aged steak. That was another one that I was, like, wanting to do for a while. It was good. Definitely has a bit of a different taste. Steak tartar is probably in Germany. Okay. Yeah, I'd have to find a good restaurant. Unfortunately, the main steakhouse restaurant, well, the main steak restaurant here in Melbourne got sold off to another owner. And so, uh, it's not as good. I We went there, when was it? I think it was for, for Mother's Day. This year, and it just was completely different and just wasn't as good. Which is a bit of a shame. It's the one that the Try Guys went to. At, um... It, um, I think it changed owners, I don't know. I doubt they would have changed theme. Oh shit, hang on. I plugged this into the wrong thing. Wait, why did it say it was low battery and now it's coming up? It looked amazing. They have a similar menu. But... I think it, the quality just isn't as good anymore. I think they've changed chefs or whatever. But now it's like, they have that, but then it, they sort of have like this African theme to it now. It's still good, but it's, it's nowhere near as good as just when it was just, uh... Steak, you know, and steak adjacent stuff. The menu is more varied now, and it's there's cheaper items, which I guess is better for them, but it's just not what it was before. It's still good. I don't want to make it sound like it's horrible. But definitely noticeable that it was it wasn't the same. I'm debating putting crowns here, like the crowns that you make, and just leaving one crate. At least with this I can track the progress. <laughs> I know what flowers are missing now. Usually when the menu expands, I mean new owners are an attempt to shake things up. And with more ingredients and more dishes to prepare, quality usually drops, yeah. The vibe is just completely different there. Tell you what, I'd still go there to get a burger instead of going to Five Guys next door. It's just, I'm sorry, it's just so ridiculous. Five Guys in Australia, like they're pricing their burgers as much as you would get at a good restaurant, and they have a literal steakhouse next door. The, the burger was good, but it's just the price that it's set at is there's so many burgers that are 
of equal quality. Like when I when I moved, I went to a burger place. It was like just this random burger place, a little bit north of where I live, and man, it was really good. Better than Five Guys. Burger places are getting a bit cocky. Like, you're a fast food place, act like it. <laughs> it's just certain ones. I think the ones that have gotten a lot of success, they're the, they're the ones that have uh, become a little more cocky in their pricing. Wait, what do you mean? It didn't work. It's okay, pizza is still cheap. Stop typing and fall asleep. Yeah. What time is it over there? It would be pretty late, wouldn't it? Get some sleep. As nice as all this looks, I don't really have- Oh, you know what? I should probably fish up here. I don't know why I don't fish up here. This is probably the best place to fish for river fishing. Everything else is just, it's awkward. There's just too much stuff in the way. I'll use this set of bait and then I'm gonna go back to the ocean and just try and get sharks. Actually, I should. Ah, oh, I was about to say customize the rod because it's gonna break, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, I'll make another one. Still of the opinion the gold and stuff shouldn't break, but okay. That's so funny. Like just as it was about to happen. I'm pretty certain I have that, but I'll catch it just in case. Yeah. still miserable outside. I was hoping that by now it would have calmed down. How's it gonna be like tomorrow? Let's see. It's ugh, still raining tomorrow, but I guess less chances. Today it's 80% it's chance of rain throughout the day. It's okay. I'll do it tomorrow. Or I'll just tough it out. I'll figure it out. Melbourne's a nice place, but I'll tell you right now, the weather in spring slash early summer is so fucking annoying. 
you get up, you know, you're like, oh, it's a nice day outside. Awesome. I'm going to wear shorts. And just a t-shirt. So you get dressed, you go out the door, you go about your business, and then halfway throughout the day, bam, <laughs> it just flips over. It's like, shit, I should have brought a hoodie. Shit, I should have brought a jacket. Shit, I should have worn pants. Or the other way around, where it's just cold and then it becomes hot. Or it just rains for days on end. Like right now, it's it's all week it's been raining. don't have luck. Let me look at the slicks again. Also, hello, Haley Bezzers. How's it going? Give me a sec. What am I looking for? Show donated. Is there one to turn on real time? What can I catch right now? There we go. Let me have a look at my my list here. So supposedly Hold up. Yeah, so there's rainbow fish, which is in the river. So I don't have that one. Dorado, which is also in the wait. Yeah, don't have that one. Sorry, I'm just going through this list in another tab. And then the rest are shark. I just haven't had luck. <laughs> Piranha. getting this thing. I say all this stuff about the weather, but I just... <laughs> I don't own an umbrella. Oh, there we go. Hey, look at that. I say Dorado, you say Dorado. Who says Dorado? Oh, 
That's a nice looking fish. I don't have an umbrella. I had one maybe 10 years ago. And then it broke and I didn't get another one. I just have hoodies. And jackets. So all I'm missing are the little fish. Is it say a specific part of the river? It just says river. It doesn't say... So the rainbow fish is extremely tiny and the piranha is just like... Did I get a shark? Not yet. I'm gonna try again once I'm through this set. Because I think the sharks are available whenever. These are only available during the day and... Because I stream at night typically. It's just... Get these out of the way. Ah, oh, I messed up. the Dorado. Oh, this is in an awkward spot. This is gonna fall into the river. Okay, no. My slingshot's done, though. Wait, hey, where'd it go? Where's the present? It didn't fall into the river. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Did anyone see what happened? It didn't fall into the water. I saw it fall behind me, but it vanished. Okay. I just turned around and it was gone. Okay, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> you had to come back to laugh at me. Fair enough. Just my glitch passive going off yet again. It just disappeared. Okay. That'll probably end up in the end of year compilation. It's been a couple weeks. The last one was... When I was playing Spider-Man and Miles just decided to run around in a circle for five minutes and I couldn't control him. No, because it, it wasn't in my inventory. So my slingshot, dis my inventory was full. The slingshot broke, so that's where the slingshot used to be. I checked my inventory.
I don't know. I'm just gonna buy another slingshot, I'm too lazy. It's okay, it's not the only thing that's happened to me in Animal Crossing. One of my villages the other day was in the, the back corner of the map just facing a wall and wouldn't move. Alright, let's learn about the Dorado. Wait, what was that? Did the auto mod sense or something? Wonderful, I'd love nothing more. Or is this- oh, it might be because I had disabled links, if that's a link. I had to do that because there were bots. Hang on, give me a sec. No, no, it's okay. I'll... I'll turn it off. I usually turn it off, it's just every now and then you get one of those- HEY! Would you like to be a popular streamer? You can buy followers at dick69.com forward slash buy followers. <laughs> it happens way too often. And then they just keep appearing, so you block hyperlinks, they disappear. I turned it off, it's fine. I usually allow it. It doesn't- the problem is it completely gets rid of it, so it doesn't appear in your message history, it just appears as three stars. So I can't even review it, so feel free to paste it again. Or I can just go look. Um, so shiny, this massive fish is named Dorado, means golden in Spanish. Yeah. Fitting title. They are also quite valuable. I understand. I congratulate you on your top-notch angling. They are- Rather large, uh, what? It makes one wonder what all- what all they might feed on. Bow, perhaps? One quivers at the very thought. Well, it'll be safe behind glass, no doubt. Okay, let me mute desktop audio so then you don't hear myself. And that becomes like a feedback loop. Alright, so I'm watching it. Yeah, so my- okay, so my inventory is full. That is confirmed. So it dropped. My slingshot breaks. I turn around, it's gone. <laughs> what the fuck? And then I open up my inventory. And the only free slot is where the slingshot used to be, so it just vanished. Okay. I wasn't going crazy. There's absolutely no way I picked it up. It just straight up evaporated. Okay. But thank you for the clip. <laughs> I'll... I gotta get around to doing that, just compiling all the clips into like one watchable thing. There's been some good ones this year. I haven't been able to do anything video editing wise since the move, it kind of slowed me down a bit. But now that I'm actually settled, I can probably do something. I 
I'm just debating whether I should use this new computer or still use the old one for editing. I'm leaning towards using the old one. As old as it is, it's good for editing. It's just... Windows 11 annoys me. It really does. Like, it's just gotten to the point where it's almost like it doesn't feel like it's my computer anymore. Like, on my login screen, it's like, hey, did you know, did you know that there is a Game Pass and that you can play Starfield on Game Pass? By the way, click to log into your computer. It's just... Come on, man. We paid for the operating system, really. I get people's qualms with, like, macOS and Apple. I get it. But macOS doesn't do that shit. I can rely on the fact that if I don't want something, the computer will leave me the fuck alone. Hey, we installed an update. We noticed you're not using Microsoft Edge as your default browser. Would you like to use Microsoft Edge and Bing as your search engine? No. Oh, okay. Well, did you know that you can get OneDrive for a discounted price? We give you one gigabytes of storage that we notice you're not using, but you can get 10 gigabytes of storage as well. No. Oh, okay. Well, did you know that you can edit documents on the cloud with Office 365. You can get a one month trial. No. Oh, great. That's okay. Your computer is now yours. But we'll ask you again when we update your computer again in two months time. And then we'll also reset your sound routing. So then you have to reset your stream audio again. Your new PC automatically turned your desktop into one drive desktop and didn't realize. Made you so mad having to turn that off and revert everything back to local. Yeah, they, there was like a big drama over that. And not only that, if you try to... Well, they changed this again after the backlash, but... If you tried to remove OneDrive, it would ask you why. And it would ask you to give a reason why you were disabling OneDrive. I don't know, because it's my computer. How about that? And then, yeah, I don't know. It's so weird because Microsoft in the 90s was known as just this power hungry company that was annoying and that was the meme. And then I guess they got humbled in some way and it stopped being the case. But now it's kind of becoming the case again where they're just being annoying. If I had the choice, I would have gone with Windows 10 for this. I don't want to sound like, you know, old man yells at cloud, but just... There's certain things they've done to how Windows 11 works that I just... I find it clunky and unintuitive. And it's not because it's new, it's just I have those same feelings I had when they did Windows uh, 8. Windows 8 is what made me get a Mac. Oh, the, that... Just the UI with the big tiles and everything, and just all the little things they changed. Just annoyed me that much that I got a Mac. And then just dual booted into Windows just to play games. I just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to have my day-to-day -day work be on that. And it's just almost, I, it's just similar feelings. It's not to the same extreme for sure, like it's not. A completely horrible operating system, but it's just 
between the stuff that just feels like it's just peddling ads to you and just it's not your computer and then just things where Windows has behaved a certain way. You use it in a particular way and it's been that way for like 30 years and then they change something that it just fucks with your muscle memory so much that you're like looking and going, wait, where is this now? And even though I know how to do things in Windows 11, it's still just, it fucks with muscle memory. I still find myself doing it the old way. I know that, that sounds like very, very old man-like. Like, why can't they keep things the way that I want them to be? Like, I, I always... Yeah, it's just, I get it. But, I don't know. I guess I'm not alone. I know, I know a lot of people that hate Windows 11, and they're not old. I think... Oh wait, I got the piranha, didn't I? So the only thing missing is the rainbow fish. Um... Yeah, rainbow fish is... It's only available until 3pm, so... Gotta keep going. I would love to go catch sharks, but... I can catch the sharks in the evening anytime. These... Are less likely to be caught. I haven't used a Microsoft Office product in, I don't know how long, like I've, I've actively avoided it. I honestly can't remember the last time I, I opened Word or Excel or anything like that. Game show stand? Oh, I got another one of these buzzers. Use it daily, you love spreadsheets. And making docs. Spreadsheets I can understand. Because, okay, I use Notion. Which, you know, the concept of a spreadsheet exists in Notion and documents in Notion. But it's more just the Microsoft Office in general. But there are, I don't know, I like Notion better to make documents and organize thought. I think Microsoft's come out with like a, a competitor to Notion, which is not as good. You'll have to check that out. I can highly, highly recommend Notion. Um, just whatever you want to do in terms of organization or just creation, it's got something for it. Like you can just start with a template someone else has done and then you can adapt it to what you want it to do. Um, really good. can use it to organize anything. I use it for like video planning and stuff personally and then sometimes if I want to set myself reminders or like goals that I want to do I'll have it just I guess be a way to just with, without being too serious but track it. It's like hey I said I'd try to do this by now and I just haven't started it. The... I don't like the whole AI thing, but that being said, Notion's AI thing is useful in the sense that you can take a paragraph or text that you write and then you can ask it, hey, how do I make this more succinct? Or how do I 
make this read a little differently, and it'll give you an idea. So, it helps in that regard. If you're a nerd for organizing thought, there's so many videos on Notion. I'll give you ideas. I just hope they don't get bought out, bought out by like a larger company. I use Figma a lot for work and I was sad when Adobe bought them because for the last decade or so I've been trying to wean off Adobe products, particularly for work, and I've been pretty successful in that regard, but then Adobe bought uh, Figma and I was sad. It's just, oh, I hate that company so much. I think every, every Australian in graphic design hates Adobe, just because their history. When they used to do box copies of their software. So graphic design studios on the east coast of Australia, they would fly someone over to LA to buy a copy of Adobe stuff and then come back because it was cheaper than buying it in Australia. You would save money by putting someone on a plane, giving them a trip to LA, Getting them to buy the software and then come back. And that sets up why most people just dislike that company here. They pretty much have a monopoly on design software at this point. I mean, sure there's alternatives, but they're just not as industry accepted. Oh man, and the, the student pricing? Oh, at Adobe, we understand that students don't make a lot of money. So we decided to introduce student pricing to our creative suite. Oh really? That's so generous of you. How much am I paying for, for a student copy of your software, Adobe? Oh well, you know, if you want all the programs you'll need to uh, learn our software, that'll be $850, please. What? Yeah, that's for the, the uh, entry-level stuff, so you just pick between web designer or graphic designer and you'll get like a collection of software, but if you want everything, um, that'll be $1,200, please. Man, I was living on fucking $2 ramen in university days. Adobe, do you think I'm going to give you $1,200 just for the privilege of learning your software? That's why I couldn't recommend Figma more before Adobe bought them. It was just, hey, it's free. And then when you start using it for like real work that involves teams and projects, then you pay us and it's not that much you pay us. Got one more slow. Oh, two. 
getting tired of looking for riverfish. I'll try shark again. I think even the subscription fee now for students is just insane. I wonder if the sharks disappear because it's raining. I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but... You only use Adobe stuff when you work pace for it. Yeah, same. I had to use it recently because we had to do some print work, and it's just like, well, there's nothing really else that does... lets you do print design as good as Adobe stuff, so it's just I had to cave and install it. So generally speaking, for everything else, I, I avoid it. Like, video editing is covered. General graphic design is covered. It's just more when I need to do things that are just, uh, it's just easier to install their stuff and just say, hey. I'll just use the work license to do what I need to do. <laughs> Let's learn about the piranha. I'm not exactly a fan of the piranha, despite knowing that they're mostly harmless. What do you mean mostly harmless? But those nasty pointy teeth, who? These infamous little biters, blighters, sorry. We'll attack when in groups. Imagine all of those hundreds of tiny teeth. To think that they're floundering about in peaceful waters, just waiting to strike. Well, never fear. I shall keep this one under the strictest lock and key, with nary a bathroom break allowed. There you have it. M yeah, I love how he says mostly harmless, and then just goes on to describe something that I wouldn't exactly call harmless. It's not harmless, blathers. Maybe he means if if there's a single piranha, maybe it's mostly harmless. It will, probably won't do much. Maybe they're the kind of fish that it's a pack mentality sort of thing, you know? Like, if there's more than one, that's when you should worry. Most piranha attacks on human only result in minor injuries, typically to the feet or hands, but they are occasionally more serious and very rarely can be fatal. Oh. But I wouldn't call that mostly harmless. You know what I mean? It's just... You can get injured. As long as you don't have open wounds, you should be safe to swim in a body of water they call home. Right, so they sniff out blood. That's not what I've been taught from cartoons and movies, it's just... You know, there's a piranha tank! Something goes into the piranha tank, and then cartoon bones appear like five seconds later. Yeah, exactly. It always shows them attacking when you dip your finger in there for even a few seconds. I wouldn't want to stress test that.
But I mean, I guess to even encounter one, you'd have to be in the middle of nowhere. That's like... But I guess there's other things to worry about if you're in an area that has piranhas. I haven't found a single shark. That's the places where you'd probably have a hundred other health concerns besides them. Yep. I like, the, I like the idea of nature and places that are untouched, I really do. But that being said... That stuff can be gnarly, <laughs> just in terms of risk. It's like... I've been to a lot of places here in Australia. And they're nice places, but I, I have recognized that, like, me being in those places, there's the level of risk where it turns into the whole thing where, haha, you know, you go around the corner and an animal tries to kill, kill you. Like, that's just the fear that everyone has about Australia. And to a certain point, that does become the case the further out you go. The crazy creatures down in the deep of the ocean, they look insane. Oh yeah, and there's still like a lot of species of things that they're just newly discovered because we just haven't seen them. Just survival down there is insane. It's mostly spiders you're scared of. Well, it's rightfully so. But I guess the way that I put it is like... Here it's the same as everywhere, it's... Think of the most dangerous thing that you could possibly encounter where you live. Right? It's kind of you... It's those same chances here, it's just... You have to go to very specific places to encounter the things that are just dangerous. And you know not, not to go there, so you don't. Unless, you know, you want to. And at that point, you're acknowledging, okay, well, I'm going to this part of Australia, so... It's just like, I, I know that there is potential death here. So, it's the same everywhere. It's like, you know... I'm going to the woods. There might be a bear there. But I acknowledge that I'm going to these woods and that there are bears there. But where I live, generally speaking, I'm not going to come across a bear that's going to kill me. Well, the mo I mean, some people might have that reality, but that's the same here. In general, unless you live in the far, far, far north, which is, just think of it as like, North Australia is the same as, you know, Southern States America. How far are the giant spiders from me? Um, they are two states. Start appearing two states away. So I'm pretty... At the opposite end of the country to those giant spiders. The states... The states where it's like stereotypical... Just, oh, you need to be concerned and pretty much... Everything you think about Australia is true. Is the, nor the, the northern states. The two northern states. Uh, one called the Northern Territory and the other one called Queensland. Northern Territory, it's basically like Florida. And Queensland, I don't know how to describe it, but it's just like, it's, parts of it is like very remote and the spiders and just, yeah. Just wild creatures.
the appeal of those states are, you know, there's the big um, Uluru thing in the Northern Territory, and Queensland has the Great Barrier Reef. So that's pretty much why it's there's appeal, and I think that's why the reputation spreads because it's like two of the most well-known natural things here in Australia are in those two states, and those two states are like where all almost all the danger is. So. But if you want, like, a safe trip to Australia, um, Sydney and Melbourne are the way to go. Those two states, just, if you stick to, like, the city and its surroundings, and you could go to some parks and still be fine. That's a safe trip to Australia, particularly Melbourne. If you want adventure, you go to the states where it's just like, it's as Steve Irwin described. Steve Irwin country. <laughs> it's no joke, it's... It, it's exactly as advertised. The biggest spider I've come across in my entire life, and this was once. It was just a tarantula, and it was probably the size of a golf ball. Roughly. That's the biggest spider I've seen. So, that's not too bad. I mean, I'd say that's pretty normal. Going by, you know, gigantic spider standards. And then, in terms of animals that can murder me, once a snake... And I was in the middle of nowhere. So. Outside of that, yeah. Well, can't say I've been in too many situations where it's been horrible. I mean, okay, kangaroos can fuck you up, but you'd really have to be looking for trouble. So that's probably the only other exception. No plans to go fight a kangaroo anytime soon. Damn. I don't know, for some reason that's like this weird fantasy to some people is they want to fight a kangaroo. people never saw one fight. Oh yeah, no, they, they can fuck you up. Their claws... Um, they are so sharp, they can pretty easily disembowel. And... Just look at photos of, of buff kangaroos. They are roided up. That's without going into the, like, their kicking ability. You've seen the roided up kangaroos? Yeah, they're crazy. It's so weird, because when you see them out in the wild, they just look so lazy. They just look like sloths. They're just lazing about, and then they might get up and just... ...go move somewhere, but in general, they're just kind of lying about in the sun. Ah, oh, that's okay. I think I might have to give up on this. <laughs> it's almost been an hour of this. Oh, I got- there we go. Alright, I got the rainbow fish. That's it. Cool. That's all the river fish for now. You saw a video of a kangaroo that went after a dude's dog and he was like, what the fuck, squared up and punched it. Yeah, that video went viral. It's a 
classic one. He got lucky that he he confused it and it didn't go aggressive on him. Does yeah, the, probably that's one of the better known videos from Australia. The other one is like that old man that does an interview on TV, how he was threatened by his neighbor's dogs, and he just starts barking like a dog. <laughs> Oh man, that old guy. Tell me about the rainbow fish. The rainbow fish is a tropical fish known for its metallic colors and beautiful fins. There are over 50 different species, each a unique and pleasing color. I must say it does make me wish for feathers of a more exciting hue than underbaked brownie. Um, the Democracy Manifest guy. That's probably another famous video. Okay, well now I can just look for sharks. I guess I got eight pieces of bait. I may as well use it. So all the bait that I've used today, that was like two, three hours of me collecting bait. Just watching One Piece, chilling. I just didn't want to subject the stream to just me collecting, collecting the clams, then having to craft 80 pieces of bait. It's straight up like 15 minutes of crafting. It's just not entertaining in the slightest. That's the game though. It is. I don't know. Sometimes I'm a little... ...too self-conscious if I'm doing something for too long. Even today, just deleting emails from the inbox. It just made me think, man, why? Do you have to... To delete it, emails from your inbox in this, or just messages, it's... Open the message, select erase, confirm that you want to erase, then go back to the list, open another message, rinse and repeat, do it one by one. Oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. I'm gonna go sell the fish. I just realized I have 15 pieces of bait, but if this is a rain thing, I have an idea to fix it. Once you get it nice and cleared out, it's easy to upkeep daily. I mean, in real life, yeah. In here, it's just... Another one of these processes where they just don't let you do it in bulk. I was saying earlier that I just hate email in general, it's just... It eats up more time. There's so many times where you'll get an email and it's a conversation someone else has had with someone and then they just add you to the thread. And it's like, okay, cool, I have to go read through this entire message thread to get the context of the conversation to be able to reply. Versus talking to someone for five minutes and giving them the context of the conversation. It's like, it's just such a lazy handballing of uh, responsibility. Just reading and answering emails eats up so much time in the morning. When it comes to just, I guess, the part that I work in, just... Most of our stuff is just done through like a... a impromptu meetings and a daily just, hey, what are you up to? For five minutes. And we just get so much more done because we're not answering emails and we just message each other when we need something.
At least I can take comfort. I, I may be getting old, but like, at the very least, with regards to just email and stuff, I hate it. I can feel young in that sense. That was one of the good things of the pandemic, is just the encouraging of more tools. You're the opposite, you prefer it. You're a bit antisocial, though. But I guess, do you prefer- you don't like verbal conversations, right? Or do you hate going into, say, something like Slack or Teams and talking it through there? Because I guess what I'm saying is not necessarily having to talk about it every time, but doing something other than email, it's like... Particularly between internal communications, it's like, hey, I got an email from so-and-so, this is what we've been talking about, can you reply? Versus getting forwarded an email, reading the entire thread. Slack is okay, you like email though, as it makes people have to put everything in one message versus dealing with back and forth messages for an hour. Just give you the info so you know what you gotta do and can work on it. That's fair. I kind of feel the same way, but I guess with, with messages... I kind of get that same thing. Like, I, I want the same sort of thing. Just tell me what I need to do... ...so I can do it. I guess I get, I get emails where it's just like, Hey, I've just hit the forward button. This- this is a lengthy conversation I've been having. having. I'm not gonna give you context. Just read the email thread. It versus, hey, just tell me what I need to do. What, what's going on here? Like, what's the conversation about? Give me, like, two sentences, so then I don't have to read 20 minutes of email. You get people leaving info out of- via Slack. Okay, yeah. I guess both are subject to that. With my experience with Slack is everyone is pretty good in terms of providing context, email, and just versus email. It's just the people I work with seem to be way more responsive and just provide more context with messages or just saying hey let's let's chat for a minute about this where am i off to uh so this dude takes you to an island uh you pay for it it's a day you can go to this island once a day it's a randomly generated island, so... I decided to come to this island because the weather will change most likely. So if... if it is indeed a case of it's raining... ...and the sharks aren't coming out because it's raining, now it's not raining. So this offers variety because sometimes the, uh, the islands can be special. Um, they'll have some materials or they might be in a completely different season to yours. So you'll be able to get stuff out of season. But yeah, typically you come here. These islands are important early on when you need to get more wood and you've already kind of gone through your daily stuff. All of resources, so they they're good to get. But for me, I, I mean, I guess I should get wood. I just figured, come here and see if maybe the fishing situation is better. I think I've just become more appreciative of Slack because... It lets me reply to messages when I want to. There we go. 
Whereas in the forest, kind of like people come up to your desk. And it's just, you know. I like my co workers, I really do. It's just sometimes. It's like, guys, I, I, I want to get shit done. Sometimes I throw on headphones and I just listen to music and I'm just in the zone and I want to get stuff done. And then it's just like... Interrupted. There's the whale shark. At least with Slack it's like I get a message, it's like, okay, I've gotten a message, I'll respond to it in the next 20 minutes. Once I've like, I just want to get this this done, so then, you know. It's okay. I wasn't a good fish anyway. What? Oh, there we go. That was weird. I'll just get rid of it. It's fine. I'm just interested in the sharks. Well, this was already worth it. And, yeah, I mean, when you're... ...doing design work or coding, because I do did... Well, I did both. I don't do both anymore. When you're in the zone and you're doing something, it's just like, you want to stay in that focus as long as you can. Because time passes, one, and also it's just, you, you get stuff done. And it's just this really good feeling of accomplishment afterwards. I think I'm a bit antisocial in that regard. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, guys, leave me alone. I'm off in my own world. shock. Looks like it's stopped raining outside. I mean, it still looks miserable, but at least the rain has stopped. Do you need special bait for shark? No, that's just... It's random. A random fish shadow will appear when you put bait down. Would be nice if it was special bait, but... Even if it was harder to get said bait, it'd be worth it. Sharks are a mixed bag. There are days where they're just constantly appearing. And then there are days where it's just, I won't see any. When this game launched, I had, it was in a season where sharks were in Australia, so. The Southern Hemisphere was very popular at the, at the launch of this game because we had sharks.
just had people visiting my island just to fish. So bad at this aim sometimes. Come on. I guess I should be happy with one shark. I'll just use the rest of the bait and then we're good. It was the big one. I finally have a... A shark in that empty tank in the museum. Second last one. Uh, game? <laughs> what? Should I be concerned? This is starting to remind me about what happened with Breath of the Wild. I... I fucked that game something fierce. I don't know what I did to it, but... I've never seen a game behave so buggy, ever. And it started with minor things, but then it just progressively got worse and worse. Do I want to get anything else from this island? Oh, there should be a recipe, actually. Somewhere on the beach. There. Oh, shock! Okay, concentrate. Gotcha. <laughs> Another one. Damn. I wanted a different one. There goes the rod. The flimsy ones don't last long. Alright, what's the recipe? A clothesline? I don't think I have this one. Let's see how it looks. Oh, that's kind of nice. I'll have to put these in some of the houses. I don't think I've found that one before. I'll make myself a new rod. Still haven't found one of the special rocks that give you star pieces. Uh, 
Ah, uh, this one's in an awkward spot. It's okay. Positioned myself pretty good. do with all these. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> Everything's breaking. Uh, okay, hang on. This is just a downward spiral. I swear if this axe breaks. How many is that? I think I need one more. Okay, there we go. You can't repair tools. No, you can only craft new ones. But before this game, all the tools in Animal Crossing, they didn't break. This was the first time they added durability. To keep you busy, like... Creating new tools isn't a big deal. Doesn't take much resources. It is annoying. And the way the games progress is once you do enough of a certain thing, so you get the recipe for a golden tool. And so the golden tools were nice in the older games, but in this it's just, even the golden tools break, which is disappointing. I made an axe by mistake. <laughs> Whoops. I was supposed to make a fishing rod. I think it would have been nice to repair the tools you buy, because they have different designs. That would have been nice. There is... I don't know if it's intended or if it's an oversight, but... So the way I prevent my tools from bre breaking, most of them... You've probably seen me do it, but... When you customize a tool... Like this... And you change it, co you change its color... It resets the durability on it. So a lot of the time I'm doing that, I'm customizing and picking a different color tool. And it's just purely so then it doesn't break. But there are some tools you can't customize, so the axes you can't do that with. Fishing rod. Or the golden items. It's just... It's a small workaround that works for the most part. I don't know what they'll do next with this. Whether they'll stick to this format or go back to just stuff that didn't break. Nintendo's weird, like sometimes they listen and then sometimes they stick to their guns. Even though a lot of people complain about it.
Ah, ahorita todos, todos, ok. Like with Zelda, everyone complained about rain and the weapon durability and they just stuck to their guns in the new game. Especially rain, oh man. I guess I may as well get the fruit. I think I'm done here. I don't- oh, I haven't hit this rock. I don't think this island's in a different season, so it's just a regular island for resources. bother with the coconuts. I don't think they're gonna get me that much money. Alright, I'll get them. Ready to go home. I think I've heard all of his songs now. Sunlight and moonlight can be rough on the eyes, but I'll still take them over your. Oh. You just had to talk about cloudy skies. <laughs> Cla cloudy skies mean storms and storms cancel dinner. I guess you could say that storms make you thinner. You think it's all a dream? Maybe it is all a dream. Did they have AI create these songs? I don't think so. Me Sometimes men do blubber. Take it from me, I know. How I cried just last night. Sad TV show. This dude's been singing songs in all the games, so I don't know. I think the ones that I enjoy the most is just... I call him Stone Otter, but... The otter that shares words of wisdom. <laughs> I have a cousin that has thoughts like that. That's... It, it just reminds me of him. It's just shower thoughts, you know? 
Yes, the, the 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 whole shark fit in that bag. The mighty whale shark is the largest species of fish in the world, with specimens up to 60 feet long. Unlike many of their kin in the shark family, whale sharks are non-violent, eating only plankton and such. They grow slowly and live long, relaxed lives of filter feeding and leisure in warm waters. So if you ever have to choose a fish as a roommate, you could do worse than the whale shark. Unless you can't swim. So now that room, this room should actually have something in the tank. I think it's the only tank that didn't have anything. Let me tell you about this fish. Sturgeon disappear on October the first. Can you guess at what can you guess at what time I caught this fish? After panicking, thinking shit, I'm not gonna catch it. <laughs> One minute before. I caught it with 20 seconds to spare. In the last minute before the season, well, the, the month was going to change over and it was going to be gone. After looking for it for like four hours, I was about to go to sleep and I was like, alright, fuck. Well, I guess I'm not getting it. And then in the river I see this shadow. The correct size, and then, yep. With 20 seconds to spare. Otherwise I would have had to have gone to an island some in the northern hemisphere or just waited until next year. That's just my luck. It's the moment I start looking for something, it just disappears. But if I'm not looking for something at all, I get really lucky to the point where people get annoyed at me. It was good luck, but it was a lot of bad luck. Because I should have been able to find that thing. It should not have taken as long as it did. Does this luck translate to lottery tickets? I've never tried. But that being said, as a kid... Um... They had this... This thing where... You, you would buy a bag of potato chips. Like a small bag. And inside that bag there was... A ticket in it. And the ticket was a 1 in 6 chance to win another bag of potato chips. Pretty much. Once... Not exaggerating, I opened 12 of those back to back. I just had a chain of 12. It's kind of insane. And then... My parents got me a cell phone. Within... Um, I'd say a couple of weeks of me getting that cell phone, I want a smartphone. It wasn't a good... Okay, it was a good smartphone in the sense of what it did, but it was an embarrassing smartphone. Very embarrassing to use as a phone. But it was a really good phone. Once in school, I avoided two weeks of detention. 
so we went to see a movie. And to see this movie, a bunch of us skipped a class. So the way you got out of our school, there were two ways. Outside of the front. You could go out the back way, but typically there were classrooms facing that. So it'd be a no-go, typically, if you got spotted out. Or there was a side alley. Where if you jump this fence, um, you just had to be quick about it. And just time it, because it was facing an office where there were teachers. But typically you could get away with it. So, about a dozen of us went. And the next day, everyone except me got called to the, the office. They all got two weeks of detention for skipping class. I didn't. And when we reviewed it at the end of it, it was just like, okay, so why didn't Will get caught? So there should have been no reason, because... I didn't go first, I didn't go last, I was somewhere in the middle. And they got everyone else except me. So, I don't know. Either someone ignored the fact that I, I skipped class, or just that lucky. I had good friends, they didn't rat me out. <laughs> they wanted to find out who who else skipped, but no one ratted. I should have been in that detention hall. I don't know if I'd want to stress test my luck with the lottery, it's just... I feel like I could get struck by lightning before I'd win the lottery. I know mathematically speaking, that's more likely. Is this new? No, it's old. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I want to put any others down. I was using these as decorations, but I think this already looks good enough. Maybe what I'll do is get rid of this one and just drop. Because I need to start collecting these now. But then, at least now there's a variety of white and blue shells. It looks nice. I still want to put something here, but I don't know what. Alright. I'm just going to go sell stuff quickly. I've bought everything, I think, so let's see. Got the rock, got the trees done. Watered- the plants have been watered because it was raining. I've bought stuff for tomorrow. Or whenever I play next. I got the daily art. Oh, I haven't checked what the hot item of the day is. Just in case it's something that uses iron. Nah. Veggie sandwich. What does veggie sandwich use? That might be a potential. Uh, no, because it uses flour, I guess. Nah, we're fine. Okay. I think I'm going to leave it here for now. This was a good distraction from just it being miserable outside. But it has cleared up a little bit, so I think I'm going to make an attempt to go get some groceries. But this was fun.
it was nice doing the Happy Home stuff and I guess just catching some of the December stuff. I got the harder stuff out of the way. The other stuff is anytime. It's just these things that are in the middle of the day that I don't get easily, so yeah. Anyway, if you were watching this later on YouTube as a replay, uh, yeah, thanks for watching as well. And if you want to support the channel over there, just the easiest way to do so is, you know, do what every other streamer tells you to do with the like button. <laughs> I don't know, I'm going to be lazy today. But thanks for uh, watching, I do appreciate it. And if you want to check me out playing other stuff, just click one of the videos that may have popped up by now. Alright, take care.